keep to the tree line. No one gives any ground. Couple survivors. Sergeant, this one looks a little funny. Uh, shit. Lieutenant. We have three survivors, one of interest. How much interest, Sergeant? Bleeds blue, circuits sparking inside. Looks like an AI. Secure it. Kill the others. Confirmed. Allsmad unit, announce my arrival. Affirmative, my lord. Lieutenant. It would seem your unit is lesser than expected. Indeed, my Lord Explorator. My unit was sent to establish a forward operating position, with the rest to arrive when that is completed. I see the Militarum is being inefficient with its resources. I understand your reservations, my Lord Explorator. However, we are the Mordian Iron Guard. We exceed, even when we are dealing with inefficient resources. Though, this is not why you are here. The rest of you are dismissed. My lord, I have for you an abominable intelligence. It is quite advanced, and looks to my untrained eyes to be fully human in appearance. Very well. Show me. Right this way, my lord. Yes. You will definitely provide me with the information that I am searching for. I am pleased with your success, Lieutenant. From here on out, you will be answering to my command. There is no questioning this order. Is that understood? Yes, my lord. We're back to RimWorld 40k, lads, with the Mordian Iron Guards. I am very happy. We have our full squad, our main characters being Lieutenant Boyd and Sergeant Karu. Of course, we have our heavy gunner Riggs and our two standard issue guardsmen, Dennis and Kimmy. Now, that being said, I am very excited for this game because, well, first, we're going to make sure we clear out <laughs> an ancient danger super early as our base but I'm excited for this game because we finally have everything available to us with the Grimworld 40k team doing such an amazing job making this game so beautiful keeping to vanilla uh, design work and look and appearance as well as making things fairly well balanced and fairly perfect for a 40k themed uh, adventure and now I am a little nervous because there is a good chance we will die as you guys know some of you may not actually the Morty and Iron Guard wear pretty much just their dress uniform always and forever and they look spiffy as hell they are the John Wicks of uh, 40k and I think that's what makes them so fantastic. But they do have, of course, their flak armor and protection underneath. That is a lot of caskets. I don't know what we're going to do with them all. But we do have some advanced components. We do have hermetic crate. We got a lot of good stuff and a big old flat screen TV. I think we'll manage around as much as we can and just clean everything up. An orbital power beam target? Oh my god, no. Someone's gonna pick that up and kill us all. What do we have around us? Shock ram. What the hell are you? Raptor shrimp. Not the kind of shrimp I'd want to be eating or fighting with. A few ancient operating tables. Now, there are mods that I have installed that will allow us to pick up the ancient gear and utilize it for ourselves. In those ancient operating tables, I cannot let go. They are going to be far too useful. 
Now, for those of you who don't know, lore wise, the Morty and Iron Guard live in their big domes, pretty much undergrounders, and that's gonna be one of our first foci as we expand the Imperium of Man tenants for the Morty and Iron Guard. Why are you guys hunting rhinoceroses? Rhinoceri? Is it rhinoceri if they're a pack? Or is it just a herd? Eh, it doesn't matter. It's a it's a rhinoceri herd. <laughs> and they're all ours. Where is... St oh, shit. No, Riggs. Riggs, put it down. Come back. Come back. Come back, come back, come back, come back. Come on. If Riggs dies, that's a... He bit us. Could you imagine getting bit by a rhinoceros? I'm more worried about him getting gored by that horn. Uh, come on. We're bleeding out in seven hours. That's a big bite. We can't even get a... He is getting smacked by the horn, but he's not getting pierced by it. Okay, there it goes. Riggs, go get tended to. Oh, you're gonna eat first. Yeah, smart move. Go ahead. Let's make, uh, patience, patient, patient, patient. There we go. Okay. Uh, who's our best doctor? Kit, Dennis? And Dennis with a 12. Okay, so if we lose Dennis and or Kimmy, I think both of them are really good off the top of my head. Um, but if we lose Dennis, we're in trouble. And Riggs, you're just... My guy is sitting there and he's so focused. He's like, no, nah, it's fine. I just need to eat. I just need to eat. God damn. Oh, he's... <laughs> I just noticed, I've been playing this now for a good, good handful of minutes. I think it's been like 20 minutes and I haven't even noticed that his hair is David's from Edge Runners. <laughs> Let's get our kitchen and meat locker built up. I think this will be good. We're going to have to do that um, kind of little dome shape for the cooler just to get that out of the way. And, uh, we'll clear that. And that should at least make it so if anyone drops into the freezer with a hostile drop pod, they'll cook themselves to death or they'll just starve to death as they try to break through the walls. Perfectly normal, perfectly fine. And my biggest worry is, is they're focusing on deconstructing and building and they're not going to give themselves a way out and they're going to kill themselves like we've seen happen before in RimWorld because sometimes, even with all the past pathing mods, Ross, Isolda Ross, 15, she'll be 16 in a handful of days, shooting, cat person, fun-loving, and ignorant. She is a perfect Imperium citizen. She's ignorant. Ignorance is bliss. You don't want to be informed in 40K. You want ignorance, and we are. We need to make a pork tab, don't we? <laughs> we'll get that sorted out super fast. That won't be a big deal. And, uh... Oh, by the way, we are in a permanent summer tropical climate. For those of you who might be wondering, it is tropical. This entire planet is pretty much a tropical paradise. Um, and we are going to kind of struggle to survive a little bit in keeping cool and keeping everyone comfortable. We are the Mordian 300 and what do we want to do with for a number? Let's go 373rd Infantry. I like the idea of being the Mordian 373rd, mostly because I... I don't know. I like 373. It's a good it's a good number flow. And we'll just call this like zone 0 or if somebody has a better idea we, what we can name the settlement. Put it down in the comments below. We'll we'll cover that. We'll go over it. Now, one of the things I do think I'm going to install at some point in the future will end up being dub central heating. But I want to see how we manage the first year without it before I commit to making that choice. I know it's a really good mod. Dubs makes fantastic mods, and I hope he continues, but it's not something I'm too focused on right now. Now, Ross is too young to be an Imperial Guard trooper, so she must be part of the planetary citizenry, which is mostly traitors, as they are all allied in some way, shape, or form with the hostile, abominable intelligences and 
robots and automatons that are existing. So we'll have to keep an eye on her. Who is this? She's Lieutenant Boyd's daughter. Why is your daughter here, Boyd? Imperium of Man, Stevenson. Okay. Well, I wonder who your wife is. <laughs> She's physically disgusting. Why? Oh my god. Why is your daughter physically disgusting to you? Oh, she's a Tau... Taukai? Tuki? A Tuki? She's repulsive, and that's coming from... Oh, she's the... She's the cancer xenotype. She's the xenotype that is... Always subjected to being uh, a, a cancer creature. Interesting. I've never had one of these before. And we get a raid right as we get the cancer... Cancer... Pawn. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. You know what, Beryl? Let's test you and your cancerness out. Um, I think that's... I, let's see. We have... Tetragenic Touch. Now, that's supposed to transfer tumors. Did we... Did we transfer any? Gunshot, hatchet... Uh, talk... Nope. Okay, so we haven't given her any... Wait. Alright, we'll try it again. And I'm gonna say the worst thing I could possibly ever say is I'm gonna keep trying to give this chick cancer. I don't care. I want her to get can- ah, damn it! I- Okay, someone tell me what I'm doing wrong because she should be getting tumors. But she's not getting tumors. Which is... Frustrating. And there's nothing in here saying that her name is Poison. <laughs> uh, there's nothing in here saying that I'm giving her cancer. And that's what this is supposed to do. It can be used to uh, give them tumors. But nothing's happening. Alright. If that's the case then... Let's just let them fight it out. And if Stevenson wins, which looks like she did pretty easily. Regeneration, minor. So she's she's going to be fine. We'll just have you finish her off. Did you give her any cancer that time? Nope. Okay. So I don't know if she needs to have tumors to get it. Or maybe because of the cell instability, maybe she's just not able to. I don't, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Just kill her. Just bring her down. She doesn't have any. Let's just call it a day. <laughs> no more cancer giving. So things have started to get a little bit out of hand. We've had a heat wave now going on for uh, pretty much after we tried giving that girl cancer. And the lads are doing okay. The squad's doing fine. Um, we are gonna need more wood though for the for the generators. But Stevenson and Ross are not doing well at all. Stevenson is down with heat stroke. Okay. Um, that's back on. Outdoors is down to 120. That's manageable. Ross is down. Okay. And no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got compacted plasteel. We'll have to get that at some point. Uh, Stevenson, what do I do with you? You have carcinoma through your entire body. I cannot manage you and waste that. And traitor. Great. That solves a lot of problems. Uh, Riggs, she's old enough to, uh, yeah, you just, you, you, you handle, you handle that, Riggs. We'll just not talk about it later down the line. There we go. Yeah. All right. Trade. <laughs> she's going to step right over her corpse. All right. Stevenson, we did save. She's back up. But the potatoes aren't doing well. Let's swap over to rice and at least get a faster crop going. We've only got 50 more packs of food. Dave. Oh God, no, no, you're a Helixian. We're, you're, you're a, you're a freak mutant. You have to die. 
<laughs> uh, we'll take your head. We did the emperor's duty with you. This isn't this isn't the Kasserkin, right? That's not who we are right now. This is the Mordian Iron Guard. We are strict followers of the Imperial Creed. We abhor the mutant. And while Stevenson is a cancer-ridden human. She's not quite a mutant. I can say that she's passable as a human, but she has so much untreatable advanced cancer that uh, the most we can do is maybe tend to her, even though I really don't want to spend the medicine. We really can't afford wasting the medicine on her, and I feel bad about saying it, but it's just she's so costly to deal with the carcinomas. That's four carcinomas, by the way. It's a lot. Oh, ooh, garbage gang raid again. Okay, that's a good squad amount. Let's grab... Let's grab... Uh, oh, yeah, we have a little cat now. Let's grab everybody. We'll keep the lieutenant at home. Send the sergeant, we'll send the squad. And uh, I think this should be an easy little... Hello, everybody. It's Muggsy from the editing room. Yeah, I decided to turn this uh, raid into footage, and so I figured why not talk to you guys about how I kind of go through figuring out what I want to do with footage for the story, and as you guys saw during the animation, I took the opportunity to turn this into a story point where I could get the Mechanicus to come in uh, as part of this uh, story beat. So we here taking the android hostage, killing everybody else that came along with the raid. No other survivors, we just needed the one. And it made for a really good point where I could just kind of jump back and forth between the characters, have the lieutenant, have the sergeant say stuff. So it made for good footage and it made for a good point to where I was like, ah, oh, this one will really slap. So this is kind of how the recording goes. It's pretty lame and it takes about 30 minutes out of the day. That raid was so damn easy, but now we've got ourselves an android prisoner and I don't know how much she's gonna eat. And the sergeant is about to have a medical break. I don't think that the android's gonna go anywhere, right? They're all gonna bleed out and they're just wiggling. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. How damaged is she? Uh, a lot of burns, right leg destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine as a Morty and Iron Guard having to go in and just mechanically work on a prisoner? How am I going to do the beds? If we give them three in each square, it makes very compact bedrooms. I'm not doing barracks living. But I'm also not giving them each, like, individual housing. I'm not looking to really make it that big. But if we want to give them three... Uh, one, two, three... Uh, yeah. And then we'll just carve out the last layer and give myself extra work. So this is build base, guys. <laughs> We're getting the entirety of the, the base built out. And... I figure this should be a good spot. It'll be close to the barracks. We'll get ourselves a ideology room. There are times where I want to not do ideology, but then they build up their own ideologies and everything becomes crazy. Oh, the sergeant is out on his own. Great. And we get a raid and he's having a daze outside. So he won't defend himself. So we need to actually get the lieutenant and the entire squad out. We did also pick up a high mate along the way. It was just a rescue. Um, it wasn't really anything important. I didn't think it needed to be talked about, but I also figured that now looking at it, yeah, I got the high mate. <laughs> Lieutenant Boyd, go and talk to your sergeant, please, as the squad just handles business. I love the Mordians. We are doing so well, and they're sticking to lore so professionally to where... Nothing will stop them. They will do their duty and do it with precision that only the Mordians could manage. We'll shift that over one. 
Now, as we get an internal cooler built, the only thing that I can remark on is we've not had much in the way of character development yet. Everyone is sticking to their duties, doing well, and keeping things up and running. And I forgot to mention Stevenson died, by the way. Um, <laughs> she ended up getting killed by uh, heat stroke, and I just didn't have the ability to save her. No, I didn't save her, not on purpose. It just didn't happen. <laughs> but as it is, character development-wise, no one's really hurt that certain characters are dead. Uh, Stevenson being gone, no one's upset about that. That hasn't bothered anyone at all. And so it's just kind of been easy going with the squad. And I'm hoping to get a little bit more character development out of this as we go. Now, one little beauty we do have is that there's a hunting work site nearby, and we are suffering from heat stroke and a heat wave that will not end at all. And it's being so flip flap and brutal to us. We're gonna go out and maybe see if we can find some free food along the way, and we'll set up a camp. We'll see if there's anything we can pick up and then bring home, but if not, ah. Uh, be stressed. I don't really care if you're away from your high mate and your psychic connection with them. Get out of here. Go. All right. Lieutenant Boyd, Sergeant Karu, and Erison. They'll be fine. It's three. Three are gone. Life will be good. All right. Is there anything at the first hunting site or the first campsite, I should say? We're camping here. Just a cobra. All right. Time to go kill some fuckers. <laughs> We're coming for you. We're gonna get you. Oh, look! A dry thunderstorm during a heat wave. Oh, man. In a rainforest, by the way, too. How are we doing over here? Oh, good. Oh, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Gun them down. Laz rifles at the ready. That hell gun is just so fantastic. <laughs> the only reason he has a hell gun is I wasn't able to give him a las cannon to move around with or any kind of uh, heavy las weaponry. So I gave him the hell gun. Waste pack infestation. You know what? We'll just ignore it. We'll scope out the entire base. We'll see what you've got and what we can run away with. If we can only take away a few things, that's fine. But otherwise, oh man, heavy heat stroke. Oh, at least they got the passive coolers. Okay, we can cool down with the passive coolers as long as we stay uh, indoors for a bit. What about in here? Oh, there's so much meat. Okay. Okay. Let's finish clearing house. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to butcher everything. We're gonna ignore the Mega Scarab Cocoon. We'll keep everyone in here together in case we get raided. And Riggs, let's start. Uh, do we have to claim it? We have to claim it, all right. We'll get Riggs to do the butchering. Uh, we'll try and get as many of these done as possible so we can then head home and make some meals out of it so we don't starve to death. We're all getting super hot. I don't know how long we're gonna be able to stay here, actually. Is that thing moving on? Oh no, Riggs is moving. <laughs> I, I miss the animation of Riggs moving the Thunder Beast. <laughs> oh, we have a bit of a situation at home and uh, Arison is on deep fire. Um, you know what, boys? Uh, she's 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 dead. Why don't why don't you just yeah? She's there's nothing you can do. Meanwhile, <laughs> we'll put down the tribals and uh, oh shit oh shit oh the mega scarab uh, hatched and then you were shooting your ally with the las rifle. Thank you, Kimmy. Thank you for shooting Dennis. It's a good thing you two aren't related or in love, or anything like that. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna... There's nothing we can do. It's foggy. Everything's on fire. The most we can do is just say, sorry, Arison. That's... That's just so much. That's so much investment. We need to get everyone back as soon as possible. 
and I think we'll just we'll get them sent back uh, relatively quickly. We'll grab the ancient operating table as well. How much pork? 511 pork. That is fantastic. It will rot in 1.4 days. That's okay. We'll take the pemmican with us as food. Uh, ancient operating table. We'll grab the good one. Oh, we're only able to grab one. That's fine. That's fine. Oh no! Arison burnt away. Oh no. There was nothing we could do, Riggs. There was nothing we could do. Don't anyone tell Riggs that there was something we could do. And of course, the moment they come back, the sergeant breaks under pressure. Uh, Scipio, what are you? You're Astro Military. <gasps> He's a squat. A Mordian squat. Are we going to pick him up? Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> How could I not? Sturdy build, long living, natural engineer, forge adept. Oh, we are going to have you crafting like crazy, my friend. Stone cutting, unhappy, grudgy. Uh, have a good memory. <laughs> uh, tactless, poor social. I love it. I love it. We are going to accept you 100%. We have a Mordian squat now. Nothing could be better than that. We do need to start building a generator room, and I'm not a huge fan of having our generators be out in the open like this, but I don't really have a choice in the matter. I do need to get the generators tucked away so we can put some batteries down and have things taken care of. I feel like I'm going to have to edit a lot of the, the chunkiness of this down in, <laughs> in, in after editing and just make everything look all purdy dirty and hurdy. See, look, it's so pretty. Yay, editing. <laughs> now I've gotten a very important quest and we need to turn one of our rooms into a prisoner room because we are going to take on a guarding job for the Astra Militarum and uh, we're gonna take it for the medicine. The medicine is most important because in the tropical environment, what are you? A nerd? I don't, I don't wanna know how they managed to subdue a Nurgle Marine and pull them out of their armor and knock them unconscious, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I took a break and I decided to install Dub Central Heating and we are gonna get geothermal power done as well. But it needs to be done. And before we get geothermal power taken care of, we need to um, make the area around the steam geyser look good. Like a freshly packed steamy hole. Yeah, I know what it looks like. It's a freshly bleached geothermal hole. What do you want of it? <laughs> oh. oh, we'll pretend that didn't happen. And meanwhile, while all the gags are going on, Riggs is having a mental breakdown, or at least very close to it, because there's not enough recreation, and his lover, the high mate, who is psychically connected to him, died viciously in a, an act I could not keep her from dying in. She burned to death. <laughs> there was nothing we could do. However, one thing we can do is make one piece of recreation that every guardsman could utilize to the best of their abilities. Ooh, Kiron, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. A majestic beard, not regulation, non-regulation haircut, and he's coming in with an axe. Well, we'll give him a shotgun, and we'll finish building off the greatest thing that every Mordian and every guardsman could make use of. A shooting range. And you can't tell me I'm wrong. Every good guardsman loves a shooting range. Look how pretty it's getting. We need to extend this wall a little bit more so we can put some more lights up. <laughs> uh, let's come down. That way they're not shooting in the darkness. We may need to get a little bit closer. But I also know that the stray shots will uh, cause some hiccups down the line. But 
it looks good. Steel tiles, some stone gravel, and at least the bedrooms are coming along quite nicely. Uh, the other thing I love with Dub's central heating is we get fans, so everyone gets an oscillating fan in their bedroom. Traitor. What? Who? Kiron, you bastard! Oh! All right, um, Sergeant, get in there. Oh, you son of a... He destroyed that bed so quick. <laughs> One of the biggest problems about having super speed on. Sergeant, take him down. Take him down. He's only got a shotgun that he's punching you with. You've got a chainsword. Do your duty. Hit him in the face. All right, we got him down. Right ear, jaw shattered. Yeah, I would assume so, getting a chainsaw to the face. Uh, we can't capture. Okay, we need to put him... Not floors. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> we need to put him with the sleeping Nurgle Marine. Yeah, enjoy breathing that in. You bastard. We'll execute him. He's a traitor to the Iron Guard. He will absolutely get executed. We'll stabilize, then strip... Because we can repurpose that armor. That uniform can be repurposed. And we have to rebuild this bedroom. God damn it. It's the little things that end up causing trouble. And we have to deal with in the long run. Yeah, the gear's not destroyed. We can definitely take that. That's ours now. You're going to be naked with the Nurgle Marine. And I will execute you some point down the line in the future. Time for Muggsy After Edits again. You might notice that the Explorator and Allsmard have completely different outfits than in the animation. That's because I forgot that the Dual Wield mod and the Mechanicus mod uh, do not mix well together. In fact, they don't mix well to the point where everyone loses their command bar. So I'm not able to... Uh, enlist anybody I'm not able to give them priority assignments or anything of that nature they become completely out of my control like they're not even my pawns so I got rid of the dual wield mod in favor of having our explorator and our primus look how they're supposed to look or as close as we can and um I'm building a whole new internal kitchen, grow house, and cooler system right now. I'll hand it back over to myself. Look at how pretty this is going to be. Oh, we'll have the kitchen to the left. We'll have the cooler in the middle. And into the right here is going to be our entire grow zone. Once we get the walls built, we'll clear out the roofing thanks to the removable roof mod pack, and it'll look beautiful. We'll get rid of this ugly ass shithole, we'll turn it into something useful, and a whole hostile faction, they're all androids. We go to war. We go to war. Everyone's in good health, everyone is feeling good, the sergeant's going to be pissed off because he's got a shotgun instead of his chainsword. But we are going to catch these bastards and we'll try and get the mufflos. Let's see how we do. Ah, the mufflos are going the opposite direction. We're not going to catch the mufflos. Let's at least wipe them out and put them in their place. We'll spread out a little bit more and try and get some cover and create some blind spots here. Uh, how are we doing? So far, the sergeant's the only one who's bleeding right now. Kimmy's taking some hits. Lieutenant Boyd's taking some hits. But we are bringing them down. Kimmy's lost an eye. You can tell by that little eye notification where it looks like it's a missing socket. But we are doing everything with the efficiency of the Mordian Iron Guard right now. Look at that. Not a single survivor close to base. Kimmy, there's that eye shot out fresh. Sergeant's barely wounded. Kimmy's the one who's just bleeding out of her eye hole. Talk about the best Mordian Iron Guard you could ever ask for. Taking, oh, incendiary launcher. Oh, we accidentally took out a panther. Okay, well, that's food, so. <laughs> 
And we did this without any shields on the Mordians. As it is, we are overpowered at the beginning. Things, however, will slowly start to get harder and harder as things go by. That's the one thing to keep in mind when playing with the Grimworld mods is you start off very strong against lower tier factions and as the difficulty gets ramped up more and more, everything starts to kind of fall into place and uh, you start losing people. But the Laz weaponry does so well at just causing extreme pain and you eventually get those kill shots, you eventually get those drops and everything just kind of ends up where it needs to be. And you get a really good late game raid fights without having to rely on making kill boxes. You can make these huge war events happen. And we'll, we'll, we'll get a cybernetic eye built up. Of course, we have an explorator. He will absolutely treat her with the respect she deserves. We're going to start putting steel tiles up in the kitchen and in the cooler. And we're going to do granite block floors in the dining hall. And everything will look fancy schmancy as they put it in their pantsy. Does that work? Someone will tell me if that works or not. Or someone will tell me it absolutely doesn't. Either way, I can always trust on you guys to tell me what... <laughs> to tell me what makes sense and what doesn't when you feel like it. Everything looks so good. Kitchen's built. Dining hall is getting finished up. We've got a piano. And now it's time to put down soil. We had to wait a full handful of days to get terrain rehabilitation built up, but now that it's built up, we can take care of all of our growing inside. I'll do the steel tiles on the outside of the terrain and we'll get the tilled soil taken care of. This should help prevent against blight a little bit better, I think. Call me conspiracy theory and people who've got more hours than I do, and I've got 2,000 some odd hours in RimWorld. But some of you will let me know if having things out of the main environment will make for better growing or not. But I, I honestly, every time I do an interior farm in a mountain base, I always seem to have better results with less blighting than I do out in the wild. Uh, but that's just me. I was going to do three farms, but I think if we do one large farm of food, so we'll do uh, corn. Corn's always a good food. I like corn a heck of a lot. So let's do corn, and then we'll do a proper crop like Devil Strand. So we can actually start making our own clothes in a couple seasons when stuff starts falling apart. So let's get the Devil Strand up and running. How many days? 22 days. Yeah, I think we'll be fine with having the Devil Strand. And it's six. So it'll take a while, but we'll be able to make some good heat-resistant clothing. I think that's probably the best idea. Or not, because I have nobody who can actually sow the damn plant. So cotton it is. <laughs> we are going to turn this entire room into our crafting and resource room. So let's get a lot of stuff deconstructed, mined out, refloored, and expanded on. And that way we can actually start having a production space for everything that is going to be our base of operation. Well, that did take a good long bit and we are finally able to get <laughs> the Militarum workbench up and running. We can't do the furnace yet. We don't have the Ceramite, which is okay, but having the Militarum workbench should allow us to produce the Mordian Iron Guard gear as well as Laz rifles. We'll get the electronic repair bench up so any gear that needs to be repaired can be repaired. We'll have the electric tailor up. We'll get the machining table up and everything is gonna look hunky-dory down here. Clear that out as everyone starts putting stuff away. Thankfully, we're going to start clearing out this main hallway, which I don't know what I'm going to repurpose as, but we'll figure it out as we go along.
It is time to execute Kiron for being a traitor. I think I'm going to keep it being the sergeant as the executioner because the sergeant was the one who took him down. And I think it is going to be the best way to go about killing this traitor. How dare he raise arms against us? Talked about the methods of execution. Oh, do you really need to do that? Satisfying public execution plus six mood, though it wasn't good enough to give us development points. That's all right. Either way, I still think that is a big win for the Mordians. Looking at things, we have just enough space to build some extra bedrooms, and we are going to take as much of that as we can. Um, you should just be working all the time, right? Is there anything else I'm missing with the androids, by the way, that uh, I'm going to need for her in the future? Can anyone tell me that? down in the comments. I've never used the Android playthrough mod, so I'm kind of in the dark if she's gonna need anything else to help keep her going in the future. I know she's down a lung, but I didn't think the androids had lungs. But all in all, she's an abominable intelligence that needs to be dealt with at some point, naturally. Andre, jump to location, no! Andre, military journalist. <laughs> <laughs> and you're hostile. You're a bug. Why would I let a bug join? All bugs deserve to be squished. Ugh, God. Yeah, Android Synthetics, Hostile Mech Legion. Get out of here. Get out of here with that crap. I'm not... However, with him did come an ancient complex, which, to be honest, I think is going to be a really good call to go for at some point in the coming days. But Bug Boy... No. Calm manglers. You know what? You're just coming to log, but I am going to take you out. And any of you that I can take prisoner, I will. And I love the fact that they're not fighting back. They're just kind of letting it happen. Oh, one tried fighting back and he got shot in the face. <laughs> if you get attacked with arc rifles and las weaponry, at some point you have to question if like where you're going to, to steal things from people is the right spot. And, uh, is there anyone worth taking? You're tough, neat, and greedy. Uh, cold tolerant, misogynist, composed. Uh, Yukiko shooting is great. Psychopath, chemical interest. Ooh, we might take you, though. You could still be a great soldier. We are in dire need of steel. Not only for just making stuff, but for making components as well. It's marble. We'll just... We Come on, click. Come on! Okay, L. Shh. Damn it. There we go. <laughs> we don't, we, we need the steel not only for weapons, but for components. And there's so much of it just kind of hanging on the outside of the base. And there's a ton inside the mountain as well. It is now time to start assigning roles to some of our characters. We do need a morale officer. We do need a prime commander militant. And I think what we'll do is we will give... Prime Commander Militant to Lieutenant Boyd. Then maybe we give Morale Officer to the Explorator. That's what I'm thinking. But before we do assign a Morale Officer, once Lieutenant Boyd is done, we are going to do Ascension Day, which is the Emperor's Ascension to Godhood. So we'll get Ascension Day taken care of, and we will then assign unforgettable yes that's what i'm looking for we took care of the panther hunting kimmy it wasn't that big a deal so let's go ahead and give um we're not gonna do tech priest i want dennis i don't think dennis is good social we're, we're, let's give militara morale officer i know it's i know it's ridiculous right now we'll give it to the explorer we will address everyone's complaints then we will transfer when we get a better social character. We will then make them the morale officer and we will then turn the uh, explorer into our tech priest. You know the beauty about having a tech priest around though is the tech priest is eager to utilize their STCs to develop things like vehicles, mobile transports, ways for you and your squad to move across the world and conquer it in favor of the Imperium. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to build a garage so the Explorer 
can build us a nice, cute, cozy little garage that we can build some transports out of and uh, some, some tanks maybe. We'll get a Lehman Russ built up maybe at some point, but we are gonna have to move the grave that has a barrel in it where we buried her. <laughs> She's got to get exhumed and put somewhere else, so we'll get that taken care of. Out of every vehicle that I can make right now, the Tango is going to be the best option, as I don't have any Grimworld vehicles available for construction. The Tango is a transport vehicle, so we will be able to make it, and it does look relatively close to a 40k design, so I think that's a pretty good spot for us. But with that being said, this is going to be a good spot to wrap up today's episode. We've got vehicle production underway. We're going to get a biofuel refinery built so we can start turning all the wood that we can harvest in this map into chem fuel. And of course, as I go to end today's episode, we get hit with a size storm. Fantastic. Let's just lock everybody up for a few days and make sure nobody gets outside. <laughs> All these people who are here who follow the Imperium of Man's Way, uh, you guys are you guys are going to have to deal with that size storm. That's on you. But with that being the case, I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of Iron Guard, a Mordian Iron Guard 40k playthrough where we are going to let this story generate on its own with the Explorer and Allsmard here now looking to accumulate STCs, looking to figure out what it is the androids are doing. There is so much that's going to go on that I am eager to explore and play. One thing I am thinking of doing, everyone, is getting a stream going. Kimiko, get back inside. Getting a stream going and maybe streaming a couple hours of Iron Guard every single week. Uh, that will end up in the main episode here. So if that's something you'd like to see, there is a link to my Twitch channel in my uh, main channel page here on YouTube. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to the patrons. Thank you so much for supporting the channel on Patreon. You too can become a Patreon supporter by heading down in the description below. Shout out to the channel members. Thank you as well so much for supporting the channel here on YouTube. It's amazing. Um, you can also, everyone, support for free by hitting like, subscribe, the bell notification, commenting, and letting me know what it is you like about the episode. What changes you think could happen or uh, what you'd like to see going forward in the next few episodes because I'm gonna be recording all week, then I make the animation, then I put the episode out on Saturdays for a nice Saturday Rimworld cartoon kind of deal. So I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys look forward to the next episode. Share it with people you think might enjoy it. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the very next episode. Peace.